All right, so uh, I have been cleaning my office and one of the big things I realized is that finished products take less take up less space and that being said one of the projects that I've needed to do is convert uh, some of these uh, SNES cartridges is what I'm going to be doing but the exact same steps and processes apply to N64 cartridges and with some modifications the N64 uh, controller pack in the memory that goes into the controller um, so uh, uh, these are your standard Nintendo screws. Um, I have the Nintendo bit driver, as you saw, and we're just going to take this apart. Um, set it to the side. All we need is the circuit board and this one I have already fixed. Um, so uh, this is going to be the end result. Uh, we're going to uh, just solder these two points and put on a uh, coin cell so that we can just change it with a standard uh, battery at any point in the future. Uh, we don't have to solder again the next time. And so uh, this is also <laughs> a great example of why I created these little labels over on the side. So I'm going to put this back together and put these screws back in. So, um, while these little screws actually fit very nice into these holes that are drilled on my, on my work board here, uh, this is actually just a, a wooden cutting board, just something taken from the kitchen. Once you solder on it, it does not go back to the kitchen. Uh, too many nasty chemicals that should not be near food, but, um, I was, I drilled all of those holes to make an LED cube and to get all the LEDs lined up into a grid, so on and so forth. But every once in a while, those things prove handy. Um, so, so that I do not make this mistake again in the future, I am going to stick this label on now. And we will look at the next cartridge. And these are games that I bought used, so they do not have my my favorite, uh, you know, save point or everything. They might have everything unlocked, but um, I'd rather experience the game from scratch myself. So it's better to, in my opinion, to do the battery swap uh, right after you purchase it. Um, before you power it on or anything. And all right, um, this is a little bit interesting. Um, it looks like this is a different PCB revision even than our last one. Um, and the reason that I noticed is because we have a whole lot less clearance here. Um, I think we're gonna be okay, but this will be a really good test. And the thing that I'm just going to show really quick uh, what I'm looking at and what I'm looking for. So the battery is these two large contacts over here. If it overhangs over here or off the top, we're still in the clear. There's plenty of space in the case. We don't have to do any other modifications. So that being said, let's set this to the side and get our battery holder okay um so i ordered these from mauser um they run a, less than a buck and a quarter a piece shipping is is the tough part like five dollars um so if you think you've got 10 or will have 10 i suggest buying 10 at a time then it's ten dollars plus five dollars shipping and doesn't seem quite so bad um so if we look on the back here, and this is a little bit hard to see, so I am going to swap over. I have a microscope camera. There we go. So that we can 
Um, so what we can see on this uh, battery holder is this is one tab um, and uh, technically this is a surface mount part and so we do need to bend the tabs down uh, at a 90 degree angle right now they're flat they run with the device um, and then this one here will be a little bit trickier um, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but the thing to point out here uh, is this this tab in the front that we're looking at here is skinny, left to right, or top to bottom on the display there. And this one here is wider, uh, again, top to bottom in the display there. And that will line up with... Uh, if we look back here, and I think if I just bring this up closer, you can see that this one is smaller, um, again, the top to bottom dimension, and then uh, this one at this point, this other battery right there, uh, is wider, and again, in the top to bottom direction. So those parts will line up. So... The big thing that we want to see now, it's really nice. This component has really nice clearance, um, but part of what we wanted to see was the orientation. And so we can see that it's going to be like this um, with the wide on the left and the skinny on the right. And so I think we are going to be okay. Very nice. I'm going to proceed. Um, so, uh, first we're going to start with some solder wick. Um, <clears throat> I am not the best soldering person to learn from. So there's lots of other YouTubers that are going to be much, much better. Um, I get the job done, but I do not solder that often. Um, so I don't have perfect technique or anything um so what i'm doing here this is a standard um solder braid or uh desolder braid um and this is a flux pen a rosin flux i don't know i got it on amazon or something um and this it's a push marker and so it just lets out a little bit and by putting the flux on the desolder braid uh, will really make this process a lot easier. Um, you'll see that the solder really, really just kind of flows. I, I find that, that this combination is much better than a solder sucker. Uh, there may be some t situations where a solder sucker is a better solution, or if you're used to it, but um, I always had a hard time getting those things to work. So uh, this has worked very well for me. So I'm just uh, taking off as much solder as I can off of the battery connections. And if we do this right, and we take off as much as possible, um, the battery will actually just about fall out. Um, and so, you know, if it's not working or um, not falling out, uh, just double check. You may need a hotter iron. Um, my iron, I, I do not remember if it's Fahrenheit or Celsius. It only shows a number. It doesn't indicate which temperature range, but my number is 750. Um, So, all 
There we go. So you can, I don't know how well you can see the molten metal, but it really is starting to fill up the braid now. Um, you can see it going from the, the brass or copper uh, to the tinned finish. And that contact looks really clean. So we're going to get back to this one. Just be a little bit more patient with it, I think, this time. And again, I'm just streaming. I stream and I post. I, I'm sorry if you like your cleanly edited videos, but I find that if I do that, I am a become the perfectionist and it never gets released. So this is how I get content out. So again, we did get a lot of solder off. Um, we're going to see if we can get just a little bit more and then we will check it. So again, if you get it, if you get as much as you can off, it may so that one will go through. Ouch, that is hot. Maybe not recommend that exact technique. Okay, that one still has a little bit more work to go. Um, I'm getting further up my braids, so I'm going to actually apply a little bit more of the, the flux. So I just pushed it down with my iron a little bit there. And this was the one that was actually stuck. I There we go, and it fell out. So that's cool. So we're gonna get a little bit more and we're just gonna clean up those contacts. They're a little bit messy looking. Um, That's a little bit more obvious uh, how we have the big slot and the little slot. Um, so that's fine. Um, so now I'm going to, uh, once again, this um, battery holder is designed for surface mount and we need to convert it, bend a couple of pins, uh, so that it will mount in a through hole fashion. All right. So. I'm going to use uh, this. It's actually a dental pick. Uh, depends on the dentist you go to, so on and so forth. But if you ask nice, uh, some of them uh, will give you uh, broken tools um, or ones that have been uh, used and sterilized, you know, beyond their expected life, whatever that may be. Um, or as a backup plan, I've seen some. Uh, metal tip but plastic handle tools at target for like eight to ten bucks all right so i think you can make that out yeah that it's poking out just a little bit um it's still at an angle right there but uh we're going to use a needle nose pliers to straighten that up now the first couple of times that i did this um, this metal loop in the middle um, would actually like 
disconnect and I got a little scared and uh, but what I found is it literally just snaps right back into place so um, if that happens to you do not worry it will be okay all right so now we are going to push this in so I'm, I, I'm lining up the big tab first and that went right in and it's cozy, but it is going to clear those extra resistors, which is great. Uh, but now you can see that this ring came loose. So again, like I said, you just kind of push it back in. Uh, it, it's got a little friction fit to it. Um, all right, so um, I am holding this at a little bit of an angle I'm trying to kind of show how I'm putting that tab in the top but it's really small and tough to see even for me here and I got like three different lights on this thing so up uh, again the little loop kind of worked its way free here so you want that to be lined up. That's going to help hold the battery in tension. So that's an important piece to get right. So it's, yes, I did. So this loop is poking up a little bit more than I would like, though. Um, again, the, the other benefit that you get from streaming is if I make a mistake, you get to f help me figure out or watch as I figure out and solve the problem. Um, I think that that is going to be okay. Um, here actually, can I pull a little bit? So I'm trying to hold the ring in the right place with the, my finger underneath and pull on that tab. And I think I am good. So now I'm just going to put some solder back onto that. I am using a lead-free solder here. Um, it definitely likes the higher melting, uh, the higher uh, soldering iron setting. So keep that in mind. Uh, once again, I am not the best, but I definitely get the job done when it comes to soldering. If you want some good techniques, lots of other folks on on uh, YouTube to show you that. So the smoke that's coming off, some people get a little concerned that that's lead. Um, it's not. It is actually uh, the the rosin core of the solder, the flux that's uh, burning off. Um, and that's by design, um, very intentional. Doesn't mean that it's a good thing to breathe. Um, I, I do like to blow that away from myself if, uh, if I can. Um, So, uh, the thing to point out, this is probably one of the easiest soldering mods you can do to a game. And, you know, um, especially if the battery's already dead, uh, you don't want to replace it really with another manufactured battery. Um, oh, I didn't mention. Uh, so, uh, there, this is a very specific part number of battery. You don't just buy random ones. Um, I will include... Uh, link in the description for the part that I'm using um, so that you can match this exactly and um, 
So that is soldered in. A little ugly, but uh, it's definitely in. Blow it off, cool it down just a little bit, because it's tempting to just drop it into that plastic case, and the, the board here especially is still very hot to the touch. Um, so that part is done, and here is my battery. Um, I don't care what brand of battery. Um, the only thing that I like to keep in mind is uh, I don't want to be changing my batteries every couple of years. Um, and so I just recommend a quality battery, whatever brand you you, you prefer. Um, I believe that, uh, so this is a lithium uh, battery. And I, I believe when I was shopping for them, uh, Lithiums are known for uh, longevity um, for this type of scenario. So uh, anyway, that was my, my main reason for that. All right, so this is warm, but I'm able to keep my fingers on it. So I'm going to take just another moment and let that finish uh, uh, cool down just a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased that that cleared the resistors because that's mighty cozy. Um, it does overhang if we look here on the end, um, I don't know, a millimeter, uh, here actually we can see better from the backside. Um, it does overhang just a little bit, but, uh, clearly not going to be a problem. We checked that before and, uh. We can even see that there's some of the, the PCB uh, breakaway um, on at that exact point. So they knew that they shouldn't have anything there. So we're we're doing great there. Um, oh yeah, board's great now. All right, so we're gonna put the battery in, and oh, so this one has a cover on the bottom. Uh, and again, you don't want to do this every 10 year or every 10 years would be fairly standard here there we go so I think ah uh, so my concern was this loop was not quite in the right position and I think that's kind of what's going on here um Okay. Uh, this is not something that you want to have a problem with. Um, last thing you want to do is actually have to think about this when you're playing your game. Like, is it going to save? Did I do this right? So, so I'm not trying to desolder. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I want to melt the solder so that I can adjust the position. That's what I'm trying to do here. You know what? That will go easier with a little bit of flux. So, just a couple of pokes here. Um, There we go, that goes much faster. Flux is kind of like a, a heat transference liquid. Maybe that's a way to put it. Um, it's, it helps conduct the heat all over the surface of the solder so that it will melt better. All right, so All right, I think I'm going to do this a little weird. I'm going to take this battery cuz I think it's about the same size. Yeah. And I'm going to cuz it's a scrap battery. I'm going to put 
put that in and hold that in place. And now I will desolder this. I'm not getting the heat that I want off of the iron into the solder. Um, Uh, the other thing, um, some people, uh, as far as soldering iron tips, uh, this is not the standard soldering iron tip that comes with the iron. Um, this is one that you can buy. It's really standard off the shelf. Um, but it's, I believe it's called a knife edge. And um, some people think, oh, well, I need the big, fat, dull one, or I need the little skinny one. Uh, this one is fantastic because it allows you to do both and you don't have to think about it. Um, you can use the sharp edge, you can use the pointy part, whatever you feel you need at that moment. And you don't have to change tips and you don't have to deal with it. Um, I'm kind of surprised it's not the only tip, but I also know there's a lot of more specialized areas. All right, so our board is definitely warm again. Um, I do feel like that spring is flatter. Um, so I'm going to let this board cool down again, and then we will check the battery fit again. Um, yeah, I'm looking at that. That's definitely flatter. I'm also kind of pulling up this. It's it's a spring metal, um, and it's supposed to help hold the battery in, but uh, I'm just, maybe I'm bending it out. I'm being very gentle with it. All right, so we're warm, but I can keep my finger on it. Um, we'll give it another few seconds. Um, Yep, now it's just warm. All right. Wow, that's not holding like I want it to. What did I mess up? So I'm going to go ahead and use this dental pick again. I was kind of using a fingernail, but I need a little bit more control here. And pushing it towards this way. Um, better it doesn't pop out immediately but it's still not where I want it to be um, I've done probably three or four of these modifications and most of the time the battery just snaps in and there's no hesitation it's like perfect so this one's kind of frustrating
push the one I try to do on the video is the one that messes up. There we go. All right, so yeah, I like that a lot more. That's it's not as obvious. And here, you know what? Let's. Alright, it's still a little tricky to see, but I think you can, you get the idea here um, that it's this tiniest little edge. Right there, that's holding the battery in. And uh, right now I got it positioned and it's doing a great job. So we're going to box this back up. clippy part here um, you always see it from the outside but uh, you just want that to clip together that's good and we're ready to put the screws in So, um, the other thing, uh, so I have done a Donkey Kong Country cartridge, and uh, I just thought I would go ahead and call out here while I'm putting this together. Um, when you first plug it in and turn it on, um, you may get some very interesting errors. Um, maybe even something about, you know, don't be a pirate. Uh, maybe you'll get some... I forget what the exact behavior it was. It was about a year ago that I did a Donkey Kong Country. And uh, anyway, the point is that when you do that, um, the cartridge is, is using a form of copy protection that is saying, hey, I was expecting you know something to be written into SRAM and I don't see it. Um, and usually, uh, so start the console, let it go as far as it will go until you see that error message. Um, and it won't let you pass that. So turn the console off again. And I think it took about three times. Um, and during one of those times, it actually wrote what it needed to see on the, onto the, the memory. And it was able to read it back the next time it booted. Um, Again, that was a copy protection feature. Uh, so when you have a generic flash cart, uh, it may report that it's uh, first it'll check the contents, but it'll also check the size in some cases of the memory to make sure that it matches. And since our cartridge is legitimate, uh, it's not going to give us a, a long term problem. Um, but right after you put in a new battery, you're going to see you and in other games as well you may see uh some issues or something weird but like i said let it get as far as it can get and um and then restart it let it get as far as it'll go restart it two three times maybe um maybe it was a fourth uh just keep retrying it 
uh, because uh, batteries don't have any actual protection in them and uh, you know you're legit so uh, thanks for watching I hope this was at least somewhat interesting <laughs>